Napa know how. The Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolored paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 500,000 parts and a little Napa know how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa Know How. Napa Know How. Blog Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. Well, it's been another interesting week worldwide. Uh, some of these things that are happening, though, with the Trump administration are difficult to follow. I'm going to comment on a few of them in a minute, uh, but I just they're hard to follow, period. Let me start, though, with female genital mutilation. Two weeks ago, I opened my show. That was the first topic, female genital mutilation. Uh, it took about half of my show to, to give, 15 minutes. Uh, I had researched the issue about three months ago. I became sensitive to it for some reason roughly three months ago. Did the research, prepared my notes, but I never had the opportunity because of the size of the comments I wanted to make to fit it into a certain show. Finally, the opportunity arose two weeks ago on April 11th. Why am I raising the issue again? Because today, (laughs) and I'm not trying to indicate any genius on my part, by the way, but today, the lead article, front page on USA Today was female genital mutilation, which they refer to as demonic. Uh, And it was a story, a very lengthy story, primarily related by victims over the years, Uh, Grown women who had had this dastardly deed done to them in their youth as early as three years old had their clitoris sliced off. Uh, The article talked about women in the United States. My comments on this show two weeks ago were primarily in Europe and the Middle East. So even I learned some additional things I hadn't learned during my research. In the United States, this is common also. Yes, female genital mutilation is common in this country amongst immigrant Muslim families. You would expect that, though they still should not be doing it. And this is what shocks me, amongst fundamental Christians in the United States, fundamental Christians, they do it, not all of them. I don't know how many do it, but it was enough for the article in USA Today to make comment, uh, a couple of paragraphs on it, fundamental Christians in this country, and also a few Catholics, with all due respect, have been known to do this. And generally with the fundamental Christians, the doctors do it willingly because they're fundamental Christians, and the mother brings the child to the doctor. Uh, and she's a fundamental Christian. In one case they related, uh, the mother brought a three-year-old daughter, okay, to the, to the, she's a fundamental Christian, the doctor's a fundamental Christian. We'll assume the child later be a fundamental Christian. But the mother, at the age of three, wanted the daughter's clitoris sliced off because she was fearful, her daughter would masturbate later in life. She was fearful her daughter would masturbate later in life. There are cases pending in Michigan right now with mothers who have done this and doctors who have assisted. Uh, Not a nice situation. It's out there. I, I don't believe it's as big in this country as it is, for example, in England. England's big time into this because they get so many Muslims. But it was shocking to me to see that fundamental Christians, this is part of what some of them do. Now I want to talk about Donald Trump for a little while. Not very long. I have four items I want to discuss with you or share with you. He shoots off his mouth. He hears someone say something. The person can be knowledgeable, non-knowledgeable, he doesn't care, and that person who said this thing to him can be helpful to him, so he joins with that person and says, 
You're getting screwed. I'm going to do something about it. And what am I talking about now? Let's talk about Canada. You know Canada? Our friend, our neighbor, our brother, our sister. We don't have a law between Canada and the United States. We ha- you want to go to Canada? I've been to Canada many times. I have many friends living in Canada. I've stayed with them in their homes. I know these people. They love us. They they are very humble when it comes to our country. They feel that they are the, the little person living next door to the giant. They respect what we have accomplished economically and population-wise. They're not a big population. They're a big landmass. And they feel they feel humbled living next door to us, which isn't proper. Uh, but they say, no, you're the big guy, and we live next to you. That doesn't mean they like us that much all the time. They disagree with us on some things. But overall, they are and have been our friends for, what, 200 years? Okay. Trump brings up, this, this just popped yesterday, it's a lumber dispute between our country and Canada. Let me say, first of all, the lumber dispute, is about 40 years old. It, it's been it's been ongoing since the 1980s. No one really has been paying any attention to it for 40 years, and it has to do with softwood lumber. Softwood lumber is used to build one-family houses, one-family houses, and Canada grows the lumber that is softwood lumber, and they export it. A lot of it to the United States. 28% of all the softwood lumber purchased in the United States comes from Canada. Uh, Involved here, so we we can understand the volume in dollars, it's about $5 billion a year in softwood lumber that is shipped from Canada to the United States. Now, Canada subsidizes the software lumber industry, like we on occasion subsidize airlines or something else to keep them in business. They subsidize the software lumber business. And that means that Canada can sell software lumber in the United States cheaper than the people who grow software lumber in the United States. So the lumber industry in the United States has been pissed off at Canada for almost 40 years, but nobody's ever done anything about this thing. So I don't know why, but it's sitting out there, okay? Now, Trump says, yesterday, I think he said, he says, oh, we're not going to take this from Canada. Why the hell does he threaten someone who's our friend and our neighbor? I don't understand. He can talk to anybody. He said, pick up the phone and call Prime Minister Trudeau up in Canada. Say, we got a problem. Let's put one of my guys and your guys on this and get it resolved. He doesn't work that way. Anyhow, so he threatens and he bullies people. And he says, we're going to charge a 20% tariff on all softwood lumber coming into the United States. Well, you say that's going to do something. Well, what it's going to do is this. It means if 20% tariffs added on, somebody's got to pay for it. The contractors who buy that lumber in this country, they're not going to eat it. They're going to pass it on to the contractor who builds the one family house. He's not going to eat it. He's going to pass it on to who? The person who buys the house. So the person who's getting a mortgage, it's only a simple one family house, is going to have the value or the cost of their house increased, it is estimated, by $3,000 a piece. All right, so this is what's going on. He He's going to have a tariff, and et cetera, et cetera. And I, I don't know if this is going to scare Canada or what. Their sales may go down. They may stay up. I have no idea. But why did this all happen now? Well, Trump was in Wisconsin last week. Stay with me on this. He was in Wisconsin last week. He went for one of those political talks he makes, because that's one of the three states that got him into the presidency. They went for him when Wisconsin has generally been a Democratic state. Somebody said, we have a milk problem, not a lumber problem, in Wisconsin here. And it has to do with just one type of milk. I read this thing. I really don't understand it. It, I don't understand it to the technical sense, but it has to do with milk being, again, being cheaper that comes from Canada than we make here, 
or we can't sell our milk in Canada because of the price differences. And again, it is because Canada subsidizes this type milk that they produce in Canada. Canada subsidizes a lot of things, apparently. I think, I suspect, this Wisconsin thing came up, and it seems like a stupid thing to go argue over the milk, because I remember I saw him on television that day last week. He says, and we're going to take care of this milk thing with Canada. We're not going to let them do this to us. Threatening again, bullying. Now, he needs leverage. And he must have gone back to the White House and said to one of his staff, get me some leverage when I talk to Canada. And they came up with this 40-year-old lumber problem. Can you see what's happening here? So we have leverage when we talk to the Canadian people. Uh, What a pain in the ass. Canada's our friend. You don't threaten them before the whole world. You pick up a telephone and you talk to somebody, or you have someone talk to somebody who can reach somebody in Canada, and you work it out. That's called diplomacy. That's how things are supposed to be done. We wouldn't have this idiot in North Korea. Maybe he's going to bomb the the carrier Vincent or Seoul, Korea, unless Trump had gone out and said, well, we're going to deal with him now. Whereas all the presidents... Since his family's been in power, all of our presidents have kept North Korea at bay. You have to contain them. You don't invite them to create a war that's going to maybe be a worldwide war, could be a nuclear war, uh, could destroy the Far East. You don't know. But that's how he acts. Let me talk about Ivanka Trump. You know, today is early. When In Berlin, it's probably 3 in the morning when it's 10 o'clock in the morning here. So their day starts earlier over there. Ivanka is at an international women's meeting in Berlin this week. <clears throat> it's called the W20 Summit, W20. And the reason the number 20 is in there, the W is for women, the 20 is because 20 different countries are represented there. She was personally invited to attend the meeting by... Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel, which was a nice thing because if you recall a month ago when Angela Merkel was here, Trump treated her poorly. He would not even shake hands with her. So she's a better person than he, perhaps. Now, you've got to recall she's she's part of her father's White House staff. She's a federal employee. One of her functions is to improve uh, women's opportunities in this country, etc., She was asked a question, and how did her father treat his employees and women? And at the end, women came later on as part of the conversation. Uh, And she said, oh, my dad's a good person. All the women that ever worked for him, and he's had thousands, they they never complained. They get a fair deal. He's, He's always supported women, my father. And as she's saying this, the women in the audience booed her hissed her, groaned. You can hear it on television if you watch watch it. And, and, and she came back. She said, no, my dad's a good guy. He's a supporter of families. He's a supporter of women. I know. Well, i got to say this. We know her father's track record with women. Uh, I don't think Ivanka knows what's going on. She's grown, she was born with a silver spoon in her mouth. She's grown up on top of the Trump Tower and all that gold over there. Uh, she's led a privileged existence. She is a princess, true and true, a princess. She's married to a prince who had a couple of hundred million dollars when she married him, okay? Jared. Jared isn't a poor cat either. Uh, her father is a king, Trump, Donald Trump's a king, no question about it. Not because he's president. He's king of his little domain in the contracting world. And she probably grew up thinking her life is the life of everyone, not realizing that the people on Main Street, the ordinary people, the people her father represents, they have not had these opportunities or this type of money or this type of lifestyle, and it's different for them. And so maybe the things she says about her father are true from her perspective. I believe they are. They're true from her perspective because she doesn't know any better. She doesn't know how other people live and get along. And she made these comments 
They're they're not true. They're they, they're phony. We all know it. Why those all those women laugh? And she had a bad time there today, and I feel sorry for her. But she does not fit in that atmosphere nor in that job, and she shouldn't be there. That's what the man's saying. Now I want to talk about anti-Semitism, and this involves Donald Trump also. The Anti-Defamation League put out a report yesterday, and they said that that anti-Semitism is on the rise in the United States. Interesting. And it's a recent thing. First of all, they say that the rise in recent months is in, in last year and the months of this year is in New York, California, and New Jersey. They also stated that Florida, the state of Florida, had a 50%, that's a big number, increase in anti-Semitic incidents in 2016 over 2015. Since the first of this year, the first of this year, there have been 541 incidents of anti-Semitism in the United States, which represents, based on their numbers, an 86% spike in attacks, 86%. Now, what's the cause of this? Where does it come from? Well, they suggest it comes from Donald Trump's election because, and they're looking at the numbers, the ant- Trump made anti-Semitic statements, they say, during the course of the campaign or anti-Semitic suggestions. He had Steve Bannon, a, a recognized anti-Semitic Semitic on his staff, still on his staff. Uh, and beginning, well, let's go this way. In 2016, the whole year, anti-Semitic incidents were up 34% in this country. One-third of that increase occurred in the last two months of 2016, following Trump's election. Now, is Trump an anti-Semitic? I don't think so. I'm not trying to be nice to him and his daughter tonight, but I really don't think he is. Uh, He's the type of guy that says whatever comes into his head, uh, he doesn't think about what he's going to say. All he knows is if he says this at this moment, he believes it will benefit him. And apparently he made some anti-Semitic representations, and he, he fails to understand that half the people in this country follow him, the Pied Piper. What he says has meaning. They believe him. They begin to think like him. They begin to act like him if he is anti-Semitic. In any event, they become motivated to commit anti-Semitic acts. Police officers. Boy, what a, what a ride they're getting. Uh, deservedly so. <laughs> Sometimes, most of the time. Uh, I know police officers. When I was a young lawyer, this goes back to 1962 through 1964, for three years, I represented 55,000 full-time civil service police officers in the state of New York. All the PBAs had a state organization, New York State Police Conference, Inc. I was their general counsel. Uh, Policemen didn't think then as they think today. They were like you and me, they thought. They thought like everyone else. Today, though... The last 15 years, they've changed. I I talk to police officers, and I ask them, why do you have this attitude? He says, because I think somebody's going to kill me out there. I want to go home to my family every night. So there's a problem in here. And they're they're quick to pull the gun, especially on blacks. Uh, So here's what happened in Worth County. Uh, This is a sheriff gone crazy. We're at the Worth County High School. And the kids came back from spring break. All 900 of the student body come back following spring break. Who's waiting for them at the school? The Wayne County Sheriff's Department. Okay? This is April 14th. The Sheriff's Department was there without a search warrant, nor did they have probable cause to search the students. But search they did, all 900 of the high school students, they were searched. And during the search, 
Some were groped. Some were felt up. It was an aggressive pat-down. They were looking for drugs, by the way. This was the whole purpose of the search. They went there looking for drugs, and they, they body searched, in effect, not internally. They groped, they touched, they were aggressive. They had the drug dogs there. They were intrusive, it is described as the, the groping. And they pat, patted down these kids a little aggressively here. And with 900 students, you know how much dope was found? Absolutely nothing. Zip. Now, why was the sheriff there on April 14th? Because a month earlier, on March 17th, the city police department, a sheriff's department is superior to a city police department in most states. The city police department, okay, Worth City Police Department, went in there and checked the school, the high school, for drugs. And they didn't find any. But the sheriff said there must be. So without getting a court order, without doing anything, he took a lot of his troops and his dogs, and he went to the school, and he body searched them all and came up with nothing. The parents are infuriated. I don't know what's going to come of this because it's only two weeks ago, even less than two weeks ago. Something's going to happen. But we don't want a sheriff who does something like that. We don't want a police officer who does something like that. That tends to be, tends towards lunacy. Trump, this is not a Trump story. I don't attribute any blame to Trump for what I'm going to tell you now, though he's indirectly involved in this thing, uh, very, very limitedly. But he has nothing to do with it. A Trump campaign chair, county campaign chair, former judge, school board member, was arrested and arraigned Friday for child sex trafficking. All this took place during the campaign. When he was arraigned, by the way, this former judge had put on his ankle, you know, the ankle monitor to follow him, be with him everywhere he goes. He's a 74-year-old Campbell County retired judge. His name's Tim Nolan, N-O-L-I-N. Uh he also, by the way, besides all the nice things I've said about him, he also is a member or was a member of the Ku Klux Klan. During the campaign, a picture of him came up uh, in his cap and gown, Ku Klux Klan cap and gown, and the governor removed him from another civil appointment he had made through the governor's office, but nobody bothered to take him off of the Trump campaign chairman for the county. All right. And he's charged with felony child trafficking, felony inducing a minor to engage in sex, and giving alcohol to a minor. Um, Last month, in a non-related situation, but at a press conference where some of the reporters were able to ask Trump questions, and whatever he was talking about had to do with trafficking, sex trafficking. And Trump said he planned to go after those involved in, and I quote, human tra- this human trafficking epidemic. Well, here's I'm making a joke out of this, too. Here's his chance. He could get involved in the Judge Tim Nolan situation back in Campbell County, Kentucky, to start his, you know, what he should be doing through Jeff Sessions all over the United States instead of having Jeff Sessions uh, going out, our, our, our great bigoted attorney general, racist, going out and picking people up uh, who he purports to be here illegal and throwing them out of the country, disrupting families, et cetera, et cetera, who's doing for his president, for his master, things that should not be going on in this country now, at least from my perspective. Uh, let's talk about United and American Airlines. I'm not going to go through the stories regarding both airlines and what's transpired in the in recent days, but I want to talk about why I think this happens. In the last 10 years, people have changed as to our how we feel about each other. People who used to talk on planes don't even talk to each other. You know, the person sitting next to you, everybody used to talk to everybody on a plane. Uh, it doesn't happen anymore. 
People aren't nice to each other anywhere. Forget on an airplane anywhere. We're not nice to each other as we used to be. Uh, people are combative with each other, challenging each other in your face. And it's it's like politics in Washington. Democrats and Republicans, they're at each other's throats. And it's happening out here now in society. Two things were forgotten in the United and American Airlines situations. One, the customer's always right. I don't care how you cut it. You want to stay in business. The customer is always right. Number two, and more importantly, in the United and American Airlines situation, and in many things happening on the street, and in what's happening in Washington between our legislators, we, I include me, I do it sometimes, we all forget the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So, when you don't, what happens is what happened on the United flight and the American Airlines flight. Power outages last week in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York City. Last Friday, on the same morning, three major cities in our country, the power went out. Okay, in New York City, it was 6 a.m., uh, L.A. and San Francisco later in the morning. The New York City outage was caused by a substation fire. They still have not told us. Maybe they don't know why Los Angeles and San Francisco lost their power. Uh, none of the reports suggest a cyber attack. What I want to share with you or why I want to share this, everything is computerized today. And this is what worries me about a war. All somebody has to do is press a couple of buttons from Thimble, Siberia, wherever. And all our computers are hacked into. Our whole system will go down. Air bases, military bases, uh, electric power in our cities. Nothing will move because they know how to do it. And we know how to do it to them, too. And this is something that we have to be wary of and we have to be worried about. When I first heard about the outage in New York City, I said, maybe. Then when I heard L.A. and San Francisco, I said, my God, is somebody screwing around like the Russians tapping into the Democratic Party? Uh, it's scary. That's all I'm saying. This is the world we live in, though. It would take a press of a button to bring us to our knees so we couldn't function in the way we have to every day and in the way we would have to in order to protect ourselves. Israel Prime Minister Netanyahu, I don't like him. And the reason I don't like him, I think he's got brass testicles. I thought it was impolite and insulting to President Obama for him to come here at the invitation of uh, Boehner, Speaker Boehner, to speak before a joint session of Congress Never invited by our president, never invited by the nation of the United States, uh, but he came here. And he insulted my president and yours when he did it. And the guy's got brass balls. I'm going to say it again. He's done other things. Uh, and he's got problems out there in Israel. He just won an election close. Well, he's got a sad situation now. Uh, his wife, all right? They're considering indicting her. Now, you have to understand, they have, you know, a county level, perhaps over there, I don't know how they describe it, uh, who said she, they thought she committed crimes and they were going to arrest her, indict her. But because she is the prime minister's wife, they kicked it up to whatever their attorney general is uh, in Israel. And they're now considering whether they should formally indict her for using public funds, okay, for personal use, public funds for personal use, private spending, new furniture for the house, paid off for father's bills and things like that. That's the show for this week, my friends. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, I'm doing a Facebook book video every day, too. One, last maybe two or three minutes, where I talk about happy things, smiley things, and they talk about sad things. Uh, you may, If you're on Facebook, it's under Key West Lou. Take a look at it. You might enjoy it. Other than that, I appreciate your listening again this week, and I look forward to being with you again next week.
Say hi to spring's most amazing style steal at Old Navy. One day only, today. Women's tanks are just $2. And don't forget to come in now to redeem your super cash. Hurry in. High fashion, Old Navy. Valid 429, limit 5 per customer. Select styles in stores only.